Uh, pleasant good afternoon to all. Uh, it is another opportunity given to us by God to be here. Um, and we must be thankful always, uh, even in the midst of hardship, uh, we are able to express the love, express the emotions, express the feelings uh, that we share for our dear and passing sister, Otelia, uh, more affectionately known to most persons here as Sister Mami. Um, she definitely brought a level of joy to every person that she interacted with. And uh, if you cannot say the same, then I don't think that you've been around her enough. Um, today, as we assemble to sadly lay her to rest, we want to reflect on the life and the impact that she made uh, upon each and every one of us. So we want to officially say welcome. And before we do anything else, we would like to start off with a word of prayer. So we'd like to invite our brother, Peter Lewis, who will direct our hearts in prayer. A pleasant good afternoon to all. May we all stand, please, as we address the throne of God. Let us go to God in prayer. O God of our salvation, incline thine ears unto our prayer. Cancel our sin and blot out our transgression. Father and God, we come before your throne of grace and mercy because of Jesus Christ and the sacrifice on Calvary's cross, who has given us boldness and confidence as priests of thee, that we can come before thee and make our request known, Father, knowing that you would hear our prayer based upon your will. And with that, Father, we come and we ask the petition of you, O God, and we ask, O Lord, that you will be with the family of the deceased. We ask, O Lord, in time like this, that you will give them the strength and the courage that is needed to go through what they are going through because we understand the fact that losing a loved one could be very tough. And therefore, Father, because we cannot go to no one else, we come to you because we know that you are the God of comfort. And we ask, O oh God, that you will comfort their hearts and that you will give them the strength that is needed, O oh God, that they're able to endure. In spite of she has passed and they would miss her, O oh Father, and we all would miss her, Father, give him the assurance that he's going in a better place. Father, we know that she is with you now, for she has laid down the flesh. She sent it back to the dust, and the spirit is back to you. And Father, it is in your hands, O oh Father, so you will do as you will. And there, God, we ask that you will continue to be every single one of us who are here this day and help us to realize that our time would also come when we will pass from this life. We pray, God, that every single man and woman who is here this day will make it their duty to meet the makeup when he pass from this life. Because as you had said in your word, for it's appointed and the man wants to die and then come the judgment. May we all be ready for such a day. And with that, we ask, O oh Lord, that you will be with us and take the lead with us in everything that will be said and done here this day. All in all, may you get the glory and the honor, you and your son, Jesus Christ, for it is in his name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen, amen. and amen. amen. Thank you, Brother Peter, for a wonderful prayer. If you do have your pamphlets in front of you, uh, we're going to sing a few songs at this point in time. Uh, so we're going to start with, He has made me glad, standing on the promises after, and then leaning on the everlasting arms. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his course with praise. 
I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. And he has made me glad. Oh, he has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his course with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. And he has made me glad. Oh, he has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. And he has made me glad. And he has made me glad. I will rejoice for he May we stand as we sing the next two songs, standing on the promises of God, then leaning on the everlasting arms. The standing on the promises of Christ my King, through eternal ages let his praises sing. Glory in the highest, I will shout and sing. I am standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God my Savior, standing, standing. I am standing on the promises of God, standing on the promises that cannot fail. Oh, when the howling storms of doubt and fear assail, by the living word of God I shall prevail. I am standing on the promises of God, standing, standing, standing on the promises of God. My Savior, standing, standing. I am standing on the promises of God, standing on the promises of Christ the Lord, bound to Him eternally by love strong call and overcoming daily with the Spirit's word. I am standing on the promises of God, standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior, standing, standing. I am standing on the promises of God, standing on the promises I can not fall, listening every moment to the Spirit's call, resting in my Savior as my all in all, and we are standing on the promises of God, standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises of God, my Savior, standing, standing. I am 
standing on the promises of God. Amen. You know, one of the most amazing things about uh, Sister Otilia is that when it was time for service, don't mind the sweat, it's a little hot, um, but when it was time for service, usually she's one of the first persons there. Um, I don't know what Shamali would be doing on the morning time, but usually she's up there ahead of everybody, even if she struggled to walk at times, she would make sure that she was ready. She would make sure that she got up there, whether she had to push along with her walker or just come along with her stick, she would make sure that she was there. And there was hardly a time that she would miss service unless she was really, you know, down and out. And uh, that was one of the most encouraging things that I have seen in my life, that despite age, despite the feeling, despite how down you might be, the mere fact that she made time for God was an amazing thing. And I think that we all should be encouraged uh, by that. But one thing I can say is that she always leaned on his everlasting arms. Uh, so if you are looking to do the same and following her example, let's sing this evening. What a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arm. And what a blessedness, what a peace is mine, I'm leaning on the everlasting You know we're leaning, we're leaning. Safe and secure from all alarm. You know we're leaning, we're leaning, we're leaning on the everlasting arm. And know how sweet to walk in this pilgrim way. The everlasting arm, and know oh, how bright the path in growth from day to day. We're leaning on the everlasting arm. You know we're leaning, we're leaning, we're safe and secure. From all along, you know we're leaning, you know we're leaning, we're leaning on the everlasting arm. And what have I to dread and what have I to fear, we're leaning on the everlasting Sing on, and I have blessed peace with my Lord, so near I'm leaning on the everlasting on You know where we're leaning and safe and secure from all along you know we're leaning we're leaning we're leaning on the everlasting arm and have i to dread and what have i to fear we're leaning on the everlasting arm and i have blessed peace away my lord so near i'm leaning on the everlasting arm you know we're leaning we're leaning safe and 
secure from all Allah. You know we're leaning, we're leaning, we're leaning on the everlasting arms. You may be seated. At this time, we would like to have our scripture reading, which is taken from the book of Proverbs, chapter 3, verses 3 to 7. The scripture reading is taken from Proverbs 3, verse 3 to 7, and it reads, Let not your mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them upon thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of the Lord and man. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord, and depart from evil. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Melanie, for scripture reading. And Melanie is the great granddaughter of a sister Ottilia. Um, one another amazing fact is that she was able to start a lineage of persons sitting here today, from daughters to granddaughters to great-granddaughters, understanding the worth of what a woman puts forth into the world is crucial because without her presence, we wouldn't have most of you today. So we must be thankful for her life and the contribution that she has made. Never measure life in the things that you have gained and the things that you have earned but always seek to measure life in the things that you have produced, the goodness that you've left in the world. And as a woman, always be proud of the fact that you are able to bring forth offspring that leaves generation after generation. So we want to thank her for her contribution to the world and for the family sitting here today. At this point in time, we want to invite Shamali Langine, the granddaughter, to do a poem for us. Good afternoon, everyone. My poem is entitled, Missing You Nanny. That's how we call her at home. Missing You Nanny. The years will always roll on by and the time will always pass. But every moment I have of you will definitely always last. I like the smile when I think of you. I try not to be sad. It's pretty easy to do. With all the good times we have had, but sometimes I can't help it and the memories leaked out of my eyes. I quickly try to brush them away. I know you will want me to cry, but I don't know how it's possible but I love you more then than I did. I really cannot wait until the day I see you again. Because Nanny, I know I, I know I would hold, sorry, I know I would take hold of you and never ever let it go. Every day that passes by, I miss you more and more. A wife, a mother, a grandma too. This is a legacy you ha we have from you. You taught us to love and how to fight. You gave us strength, you gave us might. A stronger person will have, sorry, a stronger person will be hard to find. And in your heart, you were always kind. You fought for all of us one way or another. 
not just a wife, not just a mother. For all of us, you gave us the best. And now the time has come to pass for you to rest. So go in peace. You have earned your rest. Your love is in our hearts. We will miss you eternally. Thank you. Thank you, Shamali, for your lovely poem. At this time, we're going to continue along with a couple of tributes. And at this time, we want to invite Brother Peter Lewis, uh, who is going to say a few words on behalf of uh, Nanny. Thank you, Brother Willem. Brother Willem, say a few words, but I have so many things that I could say about Sister Nanny. Sister Otelia, better known as Sister Mommy. Actually, I'm the one who gave her that name, Sister Mommy, because I respect her as a mother, and she's also a sister in the faith. Everyone can testify to the fact that she was like a mother to us all. She was a lovely woman. It's about 11 years ago that I met Sister Otelia. Left my home from House and Scheme in the Limes and journeyed up to Marianne, myself and another brother. And we enter into the yard at the and family. And there we sit down in a Bible study. And then that would happen for weeks after weeks. And eventually, Sister Nani said, I would like to give my life to Christ. And so she did. And as you know, many others follow. That's a good thing that she led from the front by accepting Christ and many others follow. Now she passed and gone. She again leading from the front. It is my desire that all the family will take a page from her book and follow on. Brother Willem has said a part of it. From the time she was baptized and she started coming to church, she barely missed a Sunday unless she really couldn't make it. Sister Nani was a woman who was steadfast. She was unmovable. She was dedicated, and she was faithful right until the end. This I can testify, not only me, but many more. Even in the neighborhood, many people would see a time after time when she was not as mobile as she could. She would push her walker right into the church every Sunday morning, being sure to be there to sing praises to God and to assemble yourself with the saints to worship God in spirit and in truth. Brother Paul said this, and I believe he was speaking about Sister Otelia and many others. In the book of uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 58, he said this, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, always unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, as much as you know that your labor is not in vain. That was Sister Otelia when she was living. She was steadfast, unmovable. She was always abounding. Even when we're doing evangelistic work in the area, she'll be there with us, right through. This I can testify about her. Now that she has passed and gone, I believe that John has something to say about that in Revelation chapter 14 and verse 11 and 12, or 12 and 13. This is what John said. Here are the patience of the saints. Here are those that kept the commandment of God and the faith of Jesus Christ. Now that she has passed, he said, that her labor, she had ceased from her labor and her work will follow her. I believe that what Sister Otelia have done will live after her. I'm seeing that she left a legacy for her children and her grandchildren to follow. Not only them, but for every single one of us. It tells us that when we start the race with Christ, we dare not give up right until the end. And she has fought a good fight. She has kept the faith. She has finished the work. And like Paul say, henceforth I believe there is lead up for her a crown of righteousness. Sister Otila, she live well. She die well. So I would like to say, rest in perfect peace, Sister Otelia. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Peter, for those amazing words. I want to encourage us that as everyone comes up here, I mean, show a little bit more love, a little bit more of, you know. Because it does take a level of bravery to come in front here, stand in front of the microphone and speak. So as much as you can do, a while we are here to celebrate, it should indeed be a celebration of our life. 
So let's do that as if we are indeed celebrating. At this point in time, we would like to invite uh, for Wishy Lewis, who is going to be doing a song. All right. Pleasant good afternoon to everybody. Um, first, let me say that um, I don't really know Otelia Agatha Smith that well, but the family, which is the Spear family and Abigail, I've learned to, I became a part of them. So um, Abby has requested me to do a song. And this song that I chose to do, um, I just hope that it brings comfort to the family. Because, you know, sometimes we want to say one last thing, you know, but we haven't got the chance to do so. So I hope that this song will be a way that you can connect. Just waiting on the musician a bit. <laughs>
Thank you so much for your musical contribution. At this time, we have two more tributes. Uh, both of you will turn your attention to the screen up there. The first one is going to be from our brother Levon Lewis, uh, who is just going to do some words on behalf of our dear sister. And uh, the next one is going to be from Serana Bernard, who is going to be doing a song. So if you'll turn your attention to the screen, we have two tributes here. A pleasant good day to brethren, saints, family, and friends. I want to first begin by expressing my sympathy and condolences to the Langines family. Letting them know that I pray that God will give them the strength and the serenity to get through this challenging period. Today, brethren, we are at a time where we are faced with a difficult reality, having to live without the physical presence of Sister Ottilia. Sister Ottilia was one who brought great joy to our hearts. Sister Ottilia demonstrated her devotion and commitment to God throughout her life and even right to the very end. And while our hearts are heavy, while our eyes are filled with tears, while we are faced with sorrow because of this separation, we take comfort in the fact, brethren, that the Bible says, blessed are those who die in the Lord. And while we are experiencing this moment of grief and sorrow, we are certain that Sister Ottilia is in the arms of our Heavenly Father. We are certain that Sister Ottilia one was one who fought right to the end, who kept the feet and who finished the course. And so while we are sorrowful, we are also joyful knowing that she's with her maker, Almighty God. And at this time, I want you to know that every one of us, at some point in time, will have to leave this earth just like Sister Ottilia did. But the question is not if we will leave this earth. The question is, where would we be when we leave this earth? Would we be with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? Or would we be in a place of eternal destruction? I want to suggest to us that we must consider the brevity of life. We must consider the unpredictability of life. And we must consider the certainty of death. It doesn't matter how long we live, the time will come when we all will die. But the blessing is, brethren, 
friends is that we do all that we can to die in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ so that at the end we'll be able to spend eternity with him. At this point in time, I want us to remember the memories that we made with Sister Ottilia. Remember her unwavering feet. Remember her humility, willingness, and commitment. And let us rejoice, brethren, because the angels are rejoicing that one of God's children is now born. Let us rejoice because if we are in Jesus Christ, that is not the end. That is only the transportation to take us to our destination. And so it is my prayer, it is my hope, that those of you who are not believers in Jesus Christ, would come to be believers in Christ before it's eternally too late. And those of you who are believers in Christ will continue fighting the fight right to the end so that we will be united with Sister Ottilia in the presence of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Thank you so much. And God bless you. And I pray that God continues to keep this family right to the end. Thank you. Hello everyone, I would like to say condolences to the family and friends of Sister Otilia. She will greatly be missed by everyone, but take comfort in knowing that she's in a better place and she's resting peacefully in the arms of the Lord. I personally would miss her because every Sunday after church, we will have a little conversation, we will give her little jokes, and I will give her a little massage on the shoulder. And her favorite words to me was, darling, whatever you do, wherever you go, do not leave the Lord. Please stay in the Lord and always put them first. And these words will always remain with me. In this difficult moment, know that you guys are not alone and God is always with you, walking by your side. I'm going to do a song entitled Mercy Lord. Please enjoy. In my heart, sometimes I ponder. As thou lies road, I wander to a city over yonder, where peace and love abide, where my trials are gone forever. And 
and I'm traveling on my way. Someday I'll have to leave you. Don't let my part in grieve you. You see, there'll be a place for me, and I'm going there someday. Once again, we'd like to say thank you to uh, Brother Levon and Sister Sarana uh, for their contribution. Brother Levon is uh, one of the ministers of the Marian Church of Christ, where uh, Sister Otilia uh, spent her years of service to God, and uh, Sister Sarana is also a member of the congregation as well. Um, fun fact about Sister Otilia. In what I would consider my last moment of seeing her, she was laying in bed. We sang some songs with some of the other brethren and uh, prayed with her and, you know, just encourage her a little bit. And when everybody left the room, uh, everybody said there, goodbyes and so forth, uh, went inside and uh, sat by her for a little bit. And uh, as I was about to sit down, uh, she said, come, come and sit down. So as I was going to sit down, um, she said, hold on, don't sit down yet. She said, you see that knee? She said, that knee is the bad knee. You have to watch out for that knee. And if you sit down on that knee, we go have problems. And it brought a smile to my face knowing that she was still the person that would give you something to smile and laugh about, uh, even if she wasn't in 100% of health at that point in time. We sat down, we spoke a little bit, and... I said, let me take a picture with you. She said, hold on, let me fix myself. <laughs> and it was, it was amazing uh, knowing that despite what she was going through, she was still there to bring smile to other people's faces. And I trust and hope that we would remember those times, remember those smiles, remember those things uh, that she was able to impart on us. And not only that, after all was said and done and we took the picture, she said, before you go, do my favor. Call Abby for me. I want something. <laughs> uh, so, brethren and friends, let us keep celebrating her life every day, cherish her memory, uh, for she was an amazing woman. Uh, at this point in time, we want to have a scripture reading by Brandon Jr. Walker, which is a great-grandson 
of Sister Tilia. The scripture reading. The scripture reading is taken from Mark chapter twelve, verse twenty-nine to thirty-one. And Jesus answered him, "The first of all the commandments is here, O Israel: The Lord our God is one Lord." And thou shalt love the Lord, thy God, with all thy strength, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely, this thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. This is where it ends. Amen. Thank you so much, Brandon, for your reading. <laughs> At this time, we want to turn to our hymn books. We're going to sing two more songs, and then we're going to have uh, the eulogy. Uh, after that. So we're going to sing glory to his name and then because he lives. Let's stand please. Down at the cross where my Savior died, down where from cleansing from sin I cried, and there to my heart was the blood applied. I'm singing glory to his name. Oh, I'm singing glory to his name. And glory to his name. And there to my heart was a blood applied. And glory to his name. I am so wondrously saved from sin. And Jesus so sweetly abides with and there at the cross where he took me, I'm singing glory to his name. Oh, we're singing glory to his name. And glory to his name. And there to my heart was a blood applied him singing glory to his name oh precious fountain that saved from sin and i am so glad i have entered in and there jesus saved me and keeps me Keep singing glory to his name. Oh, and singing glory to his name. Keep singing glory to his name. And there to my heart was a blood of I'm singing glory to his name. 
and come to this fountain so rich and sweet and cast thy poor soul at the Savior's feet and plunge in today and be made complete we're singing glory to and glory to his name and glory to his name and there to my heart was a blood applied i'm singing glory to his name Because he lives, because he lives. <clears throat> God sent his son. They call him Jesus. He came to love, heal and forgive. Savior live because he live I can fail tomorrow because he He live. How sweet to hold a newborn baby and fear the pride and joy he But greater still, the cup assurance this shall can fit on certain days because he lives, because he lives. can fail tomorrow because he lives all fair is gone because I know oh, he holds a and life is worth the living just because he lived and then one day I'll cross the river I'll find life's fine, no war with pain, and then 
seated. At this time, we'd like to invite uh, Glenda Lambert, who is going to be doing the eulogy on behalf of Abigail, uh, the granddaughter of Miss Ortelia. Good afternoon, everyone. I know that Auntie Otelia, Auntie Otelia as I call her, is in a happy place. Amen? Amen. Um, words cannot express, you know, how we truly feel, but we're here today to celebrate our life. Amen? I will do this eulogy on behalf of Abigail. So, we celebrate the life of Otelia Agabatis with Nay Charles affectionately called mommy, nanny, auntie Otil, and now I'm hearing sister mommy, Otil, who passed away peacefully at her house in Marion on Tuesday, March 26, 2024. She was born on June 21st, 1941, to the late Catherine Queen Spare and Lodric Charles. She was the last child of both parents. And today she has still alive her two sisters. Her sister, sorry, and her brother who is here with us today. She was the wife of the late Gordon Smith who survived by her three children. Let me take that over, sorry. She was the wife of the late Gordon Smith and she survived by her three children, Vibert and Oni Charles, Connie Langine her five grandchildren, her, free, her four great-grandchildren, sorry, one brother, one sister, and many nieces, nephews, cousins, and friends. Nanny grew up in Marion and attended Teacher Velina School, and then moved on to the Wesley Hall School on Luca Street, as she often spoke about her walking journey to and from Wesley Hall. She later got married to my grandfather, Gordon Smith, who was a well-known farmer. He worked, she worked as a housewife, but she also worked alongside grandpa for many years. She was well-known for her cooking 
and everyone looked forward to her pea soup, especially when it was time for cutting cane. I could remember vividly my brother Leon and I carrying down the food to the cane farm down by the river. Anybody could attest to that? Hold on, right, right. Hold on, sorry. This we look forward to every year. As for me, my favorite meals, now I'm speaking on behalf of Abby, yeah, don't lose track. As for me, my favorite meals of hers was the corn flour porridge that she always made when grandpa grind the, the corn and bring it home. Nanny was one of the most humble person I know. She did not say much. And those of you who know her and Marian, she was always quiet, right? However, she was loving, she was kind, she was quiet, she was peaceful, and a God-fearing woman. She loved her siblings. These are just a few of her qualities. She also loved Patwa. And one of her regular lines to us was sake feu. When we would ask her what it means, I would always remember her saying, what are you? Nani was very close to her siblings, and they had a unique relationship. No one has ever heard or seen them fight or quarrel with each other. I'm looking up at Uncle Amos here because, I mean, it's amazing. It's amazing, right? She's 80. She died at age 82, all right? Um, they shared a strong connection, and they had a good line of communication. That I could attest to. I'm, f I'm 51, so I could attest to. Yeah? <laughs> Though she was not fond of traveling, as you may have seen some of the photos on the screen, Nanny visited her big sister, Hilaria, in Canada, and her brother, Thomas, whom we call Uncle Amos here, came over from England to join them. They enjoyed such a memorable time over there. She had a good sense of humor and cracked many jokes. She loved gospel music of Dolly Parton, Jim Rees, and Kenny Rogers. She also loved watching movies and playing card games and dominoes. Her favorite card game was Patience, and as we would have seen her sitting by the bedside playing Patience many nights before she fell asleep. Moreover, Nanny loved the Lord. Right, sorry. And made the commitment to serve him at an early age. Her Christian journey began at the Marian Pentecostal Church, now Sanctuary of Praise, where we stand here today. And when she became a member and served there for many years, she later became a member of the Marian Church of God, Church of Christ, sorry. This church operated right next to her home. So I heard the pastor this morning, one of the ministers this morning today would have said that she would have given her life to Christ. And if I know Auntie Otilia very well, she wants to make sure she make it on that day. All right? <laughs> so she worshiped there. She attended church every day until her last days when she could not move around anymore. Nanny was a dear friend to many. She touched the hearts of everyone she met with her sweet smile, her charming words, her encouragement and her gentleness. She was indeed a charmer. And whenever she, call, she was called, you would hear her reply, hey darling, hey sweetheart. We never saw her get angry. She was a peacemaker. She, she quoted many scripture verses and my inspiration, that's Abby's inspiration, to serve God came from her commitment and dedication to God, her time spent in prayer, reading the word, and her regular attendance to church service. She trusted God and was strong in faith. She could be found praying and reading her Bible every day. And when her sight had declined, <coughs> sorry, you would often hear her recite scripture verses that she would have memorized. She was a good role model, an inspiration to all of us. 
We are grateful for the time we had with her, and we know that she is at peace and pain-free now. We can take comfort in knowing that she is with the Lord. We are grateful to Nanny for being a wonderful grandmother, mother, sister, daughter, sister-in-law, and so on we can go. And we will always love her, for she will always have a place in our hearts. Thank you. Once again, thank you for the wonderful words. At this point in time, we would like to invite our brother Osafa Gordon, who is the evangelist minister of the Archibald Avenue Church of Christ, to direct us in God's word and give us some words of encouragement here today. So at this time, if you do have your Bibles, open it. If you have them on your phones, dive into it as we invite our brother Osafa. Good afternoon, all. Uh, sincere condolences to the family. Um, but as was said before me, this is more a celebration. Uh, not that she died. Celebration is that she lived. And she lived a life that has pleased God. Aspiring to inspire before you expire. These are the words that came to my mind when I think of Sister Otilia. Aspiring to inspire before you expire. Brethren and friends, when all is done, what would you be remembered for? That's the diagnostic question. When life is finished for you and me, what would you be remembered for? No doubt, as we have heard before, Sister Utilia will be remembered for touching, inspiring, and impacting many lives to live better, to do more because of the God she served. Her life taught us something about aspiring to inspire. She aspired to inspire before her earthly time expired. And that's the tag through this text at this time. We see, brethren and friends, true success is about making a difference in somebody else's life and not just your own. That's why when we are dead and gone, what would be said about you and about me? And so we measure success by the wrong measuring stick in this life. But really and truly, God's measuring stick for success is what difference did you make on planet Earth? How many people did you impact in this life? And how many people did you brought towards the way of Jesus Christ? The question is, why should the Lord bless you with 50, 60, 70 years in this space called planet Earth and you not make a difference in somebody's life? Why should God grant you even another year if when you die, nothing will be said about you being an impact to others? It's about aspiring to inspire others. 
Your life ought to count for something. That's the point. Your life ought to count for something. Souls are at stake. Lives could be lost. And decisions could be devastating if you and me decide not to be an example and to be one who is inspired to inspire others. Sister Otilia aspired to inspire. She inspired her family. She inspired her children. She inspired her friends, her congregation, and fellow brethren. She aspired in her life to inspire before uh, her earthly expiration, which leads us to the text this afternoon. 2 Kings chapter 7, verse 3 through 9, the Bible reads, 2 Kings chapter 7, verse 3 through 9, the narrative epitomizes this very same message that we all must aspire to inspire and to bring up people the uh, way God wants them to be. The Bible reads from verse 3, reading from the message translation, it happened that four lepers was sitting just outside the city gate. They said one to another, what are we doing sitting here at death's door? Interesting question. What are we doing sitting here at death's door? If we enter the famine-struck city, we'll die. And if we stay here, we'll die. So let's take our chances in the camp of Aram and, and throw ourselves at their mercy. If they receive us, we'll live. And if they kill us, we'll die. But here's the point. We've got nothing to lose. Oh, that's the message right there, brethren and friends. We have nothing to lose. And so like these four lepers sitting outside the city gates, you and me, we have at least three options, just like these three, these four uh, lepers. Option number one, you can go back to where you used to be. Option number two, you can stay stuck where you are. And option number three, you can go forward by faith. And believe, watch this now, and believe that the best is yet to be. That's what faith does. If you are aspiring to inspire others, then you have a faith that believe that the best is yet to come. The best is yet to come with you and the best is yet to come with everybody else. Aspire to inspire. God says to all of us, what's ahead of you is more preferred than anything behind you. Oh, let me say that again. God is saying through the text that what's ahead of you, what's in front of you is more preferred than anything behind you. No matter how poor or painful you pass or how impoverished your present. God has an incredible future for you. God has an incredible future for the faithful, those who are full of faith. That's why the text tells us we got nothing to lose, but we got all to gain in Jesus Christ. The, your best days are not over. Your greatest moments are not done. Your noblest achievements are not behind you. They are still ahead of you. So make your years count instead of counting your years. Oh, let me say that again. Make your years count instead of counting your years. Be a different 
difference maker, be a family changer, be a community impactor, because God is saying to you this afternoon that your best days are not behind you, they are before you, in front of you, if you trust your great God, your great year, your happiest moments, your most elevated weeks, your best days, your highest aspirations, your deepest revelations, and your noblest achievements are not behind you. God says they are still ahead of you. Why? Because there is no future in the past. There ain't no future in the past. The past is the past. And God is saying, oh, if you partner with me, if you become a child of God and you partner with me, I'm going to lead you to a better future. Because there's no future in the past. So learn from yesterday. Live for today and hope for tomorrow. Abundant life is never found in looking back. It's always found in looking forward. Oh, let me say that again. The abundant life it's never found in us looking back. It's always found in us looking ahead. No matter how painful you pass or how impoverished your present, God has an incredible future lined up for you. That's why Paul could say, oh, death, where's your sting? Because I know my future has victory over death. I know my future has more for me than I want to admit right now. God says he's mightier than your misery. He's greater than your grief. He's better than your burden. God says, if you trust in me, I'll do for you what you you cannot do for yourself. And so I'm telling you, God has an incredible future for you and for me if we trust him. And I'm telling you, brethren and friends, what God has for you is for you. What God has for you is for you and no people no pain, no problem, no perplexity can take from you what God has for you. Even if you suffer loss, even if you suffer setbacks, if you suffer betrayal, denial, discouragement, disappointment, your best days are not behind you. They are still ahead of you. God has not only permitted your past and provided for your present, God has personally and individually designed a future for you. I'm talking Jeremiah 29 verse 11. When God said to the children of Israel and an extension to us, God says, I have plans for you. Plans that you prosper. Plans that you not be harmed. Plans that I have given you a future, God says. Because better, oh yeah, better days are ahead. So go on and aspire to inspire before you expire. Your life must count. And that's what God is saying. I didn't just give you life for you to just live. I'm saying you got to live, but live while your life counts. That even when you are down to nothing, church, listen, even when we are down to nothing, God is up to something. Uh, we, we understand the language because many times we were down and out. And when we were down to nothing, oh, Jehovah God was up to something. And when you hit that spot in your life, when you have nothing to lose, 
when you have nothing to lose but everything to gain, it is in that moment that you have everything to gain. So turn to your Lord because God will be your father. Jesus will be your big brother. The Holy Spirit is your comforter. Goodness and mercy is your daily depositor. And the angels will encamp all around you at the risk of repeating myself. Let me repeat myself. You have nothing to lose when you're faithful to the Father. Oh, Sister Util, you understand that right now. You got nothing to lose but all to gain because your best days and not behind you. The world has lied to us. The world wants you to believe your best years is in your 30s, your 40s, your 50s, however they put it. But God wants you to know that Abraham was 99. And Abraham experienced his best days at 100 years old. Sarah was 90. Should I go on? I can give you scripture after scripture that once you are dealing with God, your best days are ahead of you, not behind you. So God plans to give you what God planned to give you has not even been imagined by you. It's so great, church. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 9. The Bible says, Eyes have not seen, ear have not heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man what God has prepared for us. God has a solid plan for you and me. And I'm telling us, if we trust God, we got nothing to lose. Oh, I ask you the diagnostic question again. What do you have to lose? Because being a Christian, it's a blessing to be a baptized believer. But watch this. Satan doesn't want you to believe that. Satan don't want you to believe that God got you covered. Satan wants you to live in fear. That's why I like what the sweet psalmist of Israel said. David in Psalm 23 verse 4. David said, Psalm 23 verse 4. He says, yeah, yes. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me your rod and your staff they comfort me David said fear cannot be in the same space as faith he said that fear and faith cannot be in the same sentence fear is the devil's other name yes he says yes to the valley so yes fear acrostically is false evidence appearing real. Yeah. Let me say that again. Fear acrostically is false evidence appearing real. And that's what David tells us in the text. That's why the devil, watch this, the devil wants you to focus on what you are going through instead of what you're going to. Which is more important? You see, sometimes you got to go through some valleys to get to where God wants you to go. But if we focus on what we're going through and we don't focus on where we're going to, we will miss the mark. Because fear turns the optimist into a pessimist. Fear turns the evangelist into an atheist. Fear turns the Christ-likeness into a narcissist. Fear cripples the thinker. Fear impairs the mind. And fear blurs your judgment. The top two greatest judgments or greatest fears of mankind, the top two greatest fears of mankind, according to a surveyor, is number one, death, and number two, failure. Everybody 
are afraid to die and they are afraid to fail. But if you're a child of God, God gives us the antidote for death and the antidote is Jesus Christ. Amen. But watch this. Let me show you the illusion. It's the psalmist in Psalm 23 verse 4. He said, the thing you fear so much, death. He said, it's just a shadow. Church, I, I ain't making this up. It's right in the text. He says, yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. David said, death is a shadow. Stay with me. You focus in too much on the wrong thing. Have you ever seen someone scared and running from their own shadow? But in the end, he's trying to tell us, shadows can sometimes appear bigger than they really are. And that's what we do with our problems. That's what we do with even death. We make death bigger than it really is. Shadows can sometimes appear bigger and overshadow what's real. But in the end, the shadows are nothing but illusions. So when you can't make the distinction between a shadow and what's real, shadows will control you. God is saying, don't let shadows control you. Death is not to be feared. Death is to be welcomed for the child of God. Revelation 14 and verse 13. Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord. 2 Timothy 4 verse 7 and 8. Paul says, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Finally, he was looking forward to it. There is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day, and not to be not to me alone, but all who love his appearing. What's Paul saying? Go on. Go on and achieve. Go on and, and, and bring out the best of you. He's saying yield to your best self. But there is no best you without Jesus. He's saying stop trying to straddle the fence. Either you with God or you're against God. He says yield to your best self. Because the best you is yet to be seen. Your Days, your best days are not behind you. They are still ahead of you. Let me try and find my landing gear. God says, what God gives you in that text of 2 Kings chapter 7, what God gives you is not just for you. We, 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 saw, we saw it throughout the scriptures. And we heard it so many times about Sister, Sister Otilia. What God gives you is not just for you. That's why I'm saying aspire to inspire. God blesses you to be a blessing to somebody else. But when you close your eyes and God says, it's your time, and you lie in your casket, they can say that when God bless you, you bless somebody else. Even if you suffer loss, even if you suffer setbacks, God blesses you to be a blessing to somebody else. That's why your best days are not behind you. They are still ahead of you. Who knows who God will bless through you? You may be like Moses and bless a Joshua. You may be like a Naomi and bless a Ruta. You may be like a Paul and bless a Timothy. You may be like an Elizabeth and bless a Mary. Aspire to inspire. That's why. 
Watch this. Watch how blessings work. You can't afford to give up. Because there's a blessing with your name on it that blesses somebody else. <laughs> That's why you can't afford to quit because there's a protection with your name on it that protects somebody else. That's why you can't afford to, to just give up. You need to be inspired because there's a favor with your name on it that favors somebody else. Better days are coming because the best is yet to come. Mm. Brethren and friends, aspire to inspire before you expire. So take your job and do it. Take your task and complete it. Take your responsibility and own it. Take your vow and keep it. Take your commitment and honor it. Take your lessons in life and study it. Step up and step out. Better days are coming. Take your assignment and finish it. Take your book and read it. Take your obligation and fulfill it. Take your grudge and drop it. Step up and step out. Better days are coming. Take your hurt and forgive it. Take your obstacle and overcome it. Take your load and lift it. Take your children and teach them. Step up and step out. Better days are coming. Take your corner and carry it. Take your Bible and teach it. Take your word and live it. Better days are coming. Every day will be someday. Every month will be magnified for him. And every year will be jubilee. You got to step up and step out. Because better days are coming, God says. I got a plan for you. I got a plan for you. But do you have a plan for God? And our plan should be like Sister Otelia. To aspire. To inspire. All right, let, 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 me, let me bring it local. Do some good now. Instead of planning in our beds, what wrong to do tomorrow? Plan to do good. Your life must matter. And that's what God is saying. He didn't just give you. That's why God says a time will come when all men shall stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And the question he will ask, what did you do with the life I have given you? Did you make a difference? That's why we got to aspire to inspire before we expire. Sister Otelia, oh, it's a celebration. It's a bittersweet moment, but it's a celebration. Amen. But like the proverb writer tells us, when you go to a house of mourning, he says it's better to go to a house of mourning than to go to a house that's merry, than to go to a party. You ain't thinking about your life. But when we, reality hits and we go to a house of mourning, we're able to think soberly and we're able to make decisions strongly. Aspire to inspire somebody in your life that God would be pleased with you. That when you die, God would say, well done, well done. But God can't say, well done, if you've done nothing. All right. I ain't planning to be long. If you are not in the body, you cannot call God Father if you're not in the family. To get into the family, you have heard the word. Romans 10, 17. That hearing will lead you to a belief, a conviction that your sins for Jesus on the cross. 
own up to it. And that conviction will prick your heart. And when your heart is pricked, you'll go through the ABCs. A, admit you're a sinner. That's one of the hardest things in this world today. People don't like to admit. Admit you lost, you're a sinner, you did wrong. Because that's the first step to getting right. Admit you lost. B, believe the facts of the gospel. What's the gospel? The dead, buried, resurrection of Jesus Christ. You got to believe Jesus, the dead, buried, resurrection of Jesus Christ. C, you need, to com you need to commit to the demands of the gospel. What does the gospel demand? Acts chapter 2 and verse 38, the gospel demands repentance. Acts chapter uh, 17, verse 31 and 32, the gospel demands repentance. Repentance means to make a change. Year after year, we serious. You can't live the same way. God will hold you accountable. And the thing is, is that some people get away in this life. But God says it will not happen in the afterlife. You got to repent. The gospel demands repentance. The gospel demands confession. Acts chapter 8, the Ethiopian eunuch, verse 36 to 39, he confessed that Jesus Christ is the son of the living God. Jesus himself said in Matthew chapter 10, 31, 32, if you confess me before men, I'll confess you before my father in heaven. If you deny me, Jesus says, I'll deny you too. The gospel demands baptism. First Peter chapter 3, verse 21. Baptism now saves. Mark chapter 16, 15, and 16. He that believe and is baptized equals saved. Can't be saved without baptism. And then you must remain faithful until death. Revelation 2 and verse 10. I pray that this was encouraging to us because I believe if Sister Tilia had the opportunity. To leave a message, it would be the message of our life. And her life tells us, aspire to inspire somebody before you expire. Because like it or not, our expiration date is coming. Amen. 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 As we stand and sing a song. Let's stand. All right, we'll just sing this uh, verse of this song and uh, we'll have our brother David after who will lead us in prayer on behalf of the family. Uh, so we're just going to sing a verse of oh, When We All Get to Heaven. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus, sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansion, bright and blessed, he'll prepare for us a place. Oh, and we all get to heaven. What a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout a victory. Amen. Amen. Well, good afternoon, church. This is a moment where we are sad because of the passing of Sister Otilia. I want to let you know, brethren, that on behalf of my family and I, 
We wish to extend our condolences to the Langain family. And just to share a word of scripture with you. The Bible tells us in the book of Psalms 116 and verse number 15. And it reads, Precious in the sight of the Lord is the debt of his sins. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the debt of his sins. Yes, we are saddened, but the Lord said, she is precious. Let us all bow heads as we pray. Majestic God, who is the creator of the human race, we give you, Lord, the praise and the honor for the Langain family and by extension, the Smith family. We know, Lord, that they are hurting at this moment. They are sad. But, Lord, you have told us in your words that you are the God of all comfort. I'm the prayer, O oh God, that you will lift up and strengthen, O oh God, the Langan family at this time as they mourn the loss of the loved one. Father God, may you give them, Lord, the strength and the courage to continue, Lord, to live on and continue, Lord, to help them to understand that your word has said that you will never leave them, nor forsake them. Almighty God, we pray, God, that you will bring them closer together. And that they will cling together as a family and to give each other the support that they truly deserve. But Father, most importantly, help them, O oh Lord, to continue in the path that Sister Otelia has left. And that is serving you, Father, until you call them home. Almighty God, we give you, Lord, the praise and the honor and the glory for the life of our sister. And I pray, God, that the family of God will always remember the good things uh, uh, that she had done for them. And that she will, and they will continue, Father, remembering how she had served you. throughout our entire life. Father, this moment, once again, we lift them up before you and ask you, Lord, to give them the strength and the courage in the time of bereavement. Bless them, direct them, comfort them, O oh Father, and may your blessings continue to be with them all. In Jesus' holy and precious name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. At this time, we want to invite Shemaika Langain, who is going to uh, give an expression of thanks for everyone being here and more. And she is the granddaughter of Sister Otilia. and good afternoon. On behalf of my family, I would like to thank everyone that is here today. And for those who have sent their condolences, we have received countless phone calls, texts, and visits. 
They have been both comforting and encouraging during this difficult time. This has also been a reminder of the impact my grandmother had on so many. We are thankful for your love and support, and we are so grateful. Special thank you to Reverend Philip Chase for allowing us to use the sanctuary to conduct the homegoing service. We thank you. Thank you, Brother William James, for chairing this service and for leading us in such beautiful songs. Amen. We say thank you to Brother Osafa Gordon for your sermon and words of encouragement. Yes, sir. Brother Peter for opening in prayer and Brother David also for your prayer. God bless you all. Amen. Melanie and Brendan, thank you for reading the scripture verse which reminded us to trust in the Lord and love him with all our hearts. We say thank you for the tributes done by Shamali, Peter, Farisha, Levon, and Serena. They were all touching and inspirational. Ms. Glenda Lambert, we say thank you for doing the honors of reading the eulogy, which enlightened and captivated the life of this wonderful woman of virtue. A very special thank you to everyone who contributed or reached out to our family in one way or the other. We thank you and to everyone who's present here today, we express our gratitude, appreciation, and love for being here. Thank you all and God bless you. can go out first. Uh, also, if you do need to use the washroom, you can go ahead and do so right to my left on that side here. Finally, uh, something very important, and we just hope that persons adhere to this. The family is kindly requesting uh, some quiet time alone after uh, the internment at the cemetery. Um, please respect their wishes. Um, there is not going to be a happy hour or anything along that line. So after we lay her to rest, the family is just asking for some quiet time alone in peace so that they can go through this process. So we ask that you respect their privacy, respect their home, show your love at the cemetery, and just give them their time All right, alone. At this point, um, we'll have the recessional song and then the internment is going to take place at the Mundjalus Cemetery. This video was uploaded by Humble is the Way. I say it's in my dying hour. I don't want nobody to cry. Just to close my eyes, then don't worry, don't worry about me. Don't worry, don't worry about me. Don't worry, don't worry about me. Cause I'm bound to pay the debt I owe. Yes, I am bound to pay the debt I owe. And I say it's in my dying hour. I don't want nobody to moan. No, don't have to moan. All I really want you to do for me is just to give that bell a tone. And then don't worry. Don't worry.
Greetings viewers, kindly stand by as we transition to the cemetery. Please note, depending on the distance between the church and cemetery, the transition time may vary. This live stream will resume soon as we are ready at the graveside. We thank you for your patience during this transition process.
É?
The elders are responsible. The most responsible are they? No. This is your mystery. Why were the elders doing that? Yeah, look at this. I'm not respecting. You got to enter from the funeral. The funeral?
Family members are here? Yeah? Let us just the way we are. Uh, let us just bow our heads uh, in a word of prayer. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, we come before you, Lord, at this moment, O oh Father. As we are about, Father, to put our, our sister uh, to the ground, to the final resting place, Father, we continue to ask you, Lord, to give the families, O oh God, strength and courage. Give them, O oh Lord, the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, O oh Father, in their time of bereavement. Bless them, O oh Father, and comfort them all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we'll all be changed in a flash. In the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sung, the dead will be raised imperishable, and the imperishable, and the mortal 
with immortality. When the perishable has been clothed with imperishable and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. That has no, that has been swallowed up in victory. For as much as it please Almighty God, it is great mercy to take unto himself the soul of our dear sister. Here we departed, we therefore commit her body to the ground. We get us. Yeah. Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, to eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. When the earth and the sea shall give up the dead, and the spiritual bodies of those who sleep in him shall be made like unto the glorious body of our Lord, according to his, according to his mighty power, by which he is able to subdue all things. May our sister Lotilia soul rest in peace. Right?